All right, so thank you for staying with us. And uh, like I indicated, we're going to be having quite an intense conversation about the regions in the northern part of the country. Sana Kwashe is with us in studio. Hello, Sana. Thank you. Good to have me. you on the show. Thank you Good. for having and, me once and again. And clearly for election 360 and between now and December 8th or probably December 9th, we'll be having a, a number of our, our key colleagues in here pass through to help us understand what the numbers are saying, what the key topical issues are that you also need to be paying attention to. So like we indicated, we have two gentlemen for the first time in Ghana's election history, two gentlemen all hailing from the northern part of the country, standing for the top office of the land. Five regions make up the northern region. It has been redemarcated. Now we have a number of them split. But then these are the two leading candidates, John Dramani Mahama of the NDC, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia of the New Patriotic Party. So, Sana, maybe you can go through quickly the regions that make up the northern sector of the country. Okay, thank you very much, Martin. So we have the northern region, which has stayed pretty much as it has always been. But then we have uh, the Savannah region, which was split out of the old northern region. Right. And we also now have the northeast region, right? So that split happened sometime in 2017, uh, 2017 period. And that has also given each of the different parties bigger inroads to sort of improve their grassroots support because right. now you have smaller bases to really focus on talking to them. Mm. Then we also have the Upper East and the Upper West which have remained as they have been since. Yeah, and maybe for those of you who didn't take your geographic class serious, just pay attention here. These are the regions and we'll take you through them. At first, before 2020, before the split, this is Northeast, this is Northern, this is Savannah. These three made up the northern, northern region. region. Yes. And now we have Upper West and then Upper East. So that is our concentration for today. And uh, these are the candidates we indicated. Now, key points to note, which is that the specific region John Mahama hails from is the Savannah region. Yeah. And then John, uh, I beg your pardon, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya is from the Northeast region. And so if we go back to our map, John Mahama, we are saying, comes from the Savannah region, which is this region. This is the Savannah region. So this is around this area. That's where John Mahama comes from. And then uh, the NPP candidate... Comes from northeast. Northeast. And this is the northeast region. In fact, this one, yeah. the northeast region, carved out of the earlier northern, northern region. region. And the number of seats up for grabs in terms of parliamentary seats in total make up 57 over the years, uh, in the, the, the NDC has had 37 of those seats. The NPP has had 20 of those seats. Yes. And that was in the 2020 20 elections. elections yes. You made indications that the split of the regions has given the parties a bit more advantage so that it can go to the grassroots yes. to speak to them. That indirectly means that depending on how they sell their message, these numbers could Change. These numbers could surely change. Yeah. I think what you would also see in the historical analysis is that the NPP has actually made considerable gains in that region since 2012, where they have moved now from about a, a single digit uh, to getting, I think, 21 in the election before 2020, and now 20 seats. And we'll show that again in the yeah. analysis as we continue. Yeah, so presidential votes, we know that... Uh, the NDC has comfortably won the, the northern, northern region, region yes. over, over the electioneering since 96, actually. Yes. Yeah. So these are the uh, historical numbers in terms of graphical representation. Um, since 96, we know that the NDC parliamentary seats, the NDC had nine, MPP had three, and then in 2000, NDC had 12. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can point to that. Yes. The MPP had two. Mm -hmm. the 20, 2004. And then NDC what you see 12. is in 2008, NDC had, th had 12 and then MPP had 3. But then in 2012, there was a bit of a change, and mm. uh, like, like I mentioned earlier. And there was a better performance by the NPP where they got up to 6. And then, of course, the NDC came down from their earlier 12 mm. to have only um, 11. Yeah. Now, the 2016 elections, there was a complete split of the northern region mm. where NDC got nine and, of course, MPP also got nine. Yeah. And then, again, that's repeated in the 2020 election. Elections. Which, when you look at it, the introduction of a key and strong person as 
the supporting candidate for the then presidential candidate Nanado in the in those two elections may have galvanized the people to really yeah. split the votes yeah. for um, the NDC, right. and you can see that trend. That okay, of course, the presence of the of somebody from the northern region at mm. that key position as the vice presidential candidate in the NPP has really helped them gain the numbers. Yeah. When you look back at this chart, also, it, it, it was not very clear when there was Aliu Mahama also yeah. supporting yeah. Uh, Ekufo, but clearly something has happened, something has gone right for Absolutely. the MPP when it came in the 2012, 2016, and of course the 2020 Certainly. elections. And you recall that it was in 2008, that's the first time that um, Nana Kufado asked Dr. Mahmoud Baumia to be Being his running mate. Exactly. And so in 2008, the MPP didn't really do well. They even fell from 2004 Four, to yeah, three. By one but feet. the Baumia effect yeah. clearly started increasing their numbers it shot up to six in 2012, although MPP didn't win the national election. Then in 2016, when Nana Kufuado or the MPP won national elections, there was an clearly there was a parliamentary improvement as yeah. well, based off on, and you, can, you cannot take out the argument or the effect Fact. or impact of Dr. Baumia, actually repeating it in 2020. As to whether that impact will still be effective going into 2024 is a different conversation. Yes, it is right? a different conversation. More, especially now that he is also not just a running mate. He is the presidential candidate. Absolutely. Exactly. All right. So those are the key findings we are bringing to you on how things have been in the last few elections. And there's just a, a line graph still on the northern region and its uh, um, percentile representation. Mm -hmm. You can tell that, for instance, like you indicated, the NDC has almost always been above 50%. Yes. In fact, the least they had was in the 2020, 2020 elections, elections, right? Where well, they had just about 50.7%. Yeah. And the NPP has had, you know, they come down, started coming down even further. But in the runoff to, I beg your pardon, in 2012, the Baumia effect didn't reflect as, as much. much. On the presidential side. So what you see is that, again, this... Uh, Baumia effects that we are talking about didn't really reflect as much on the northern region in the presidential side. Mm -hmm. Of course, they just made about a drop uh, of down to uh, um, 34%. Again, that same, the, there was a small drop also for the NDC when it comes to that period. But what you see is that MPP shot up to 48.55%. Mm. The, the NDC also came down slightly to 51.45% in, yes. in the 2016 uh, um, election. So, the gain from 2012 to 2016, when you compare it, the MPP gained a lot more. Mm. And of course, the NDC also lost, lost. a lot more. Yeah. So yeah. clearly, MPP outperformed the NDC when it came to the presidential election mm. in the northern region. Mm. Now, when you look at that and compare it to what we just showed, which was the parliamentary effect, you can see that, okay, there was some good thing that happened for the NPP in the 2016 election because mm -hmm. they came up significantly in the parliamentary side and also now clearly showing that they came up significantly also for the presidential side. Absolutely. But they lost that when it came to 2020. Yes. It fell sharply down to less than 30%. Yeah. And that's a shock, actually, because you would have expected that with this kind of increase, so 48, 34, we're talking about, say, some 7 or 8 percentile increase. The drop is actually the worst performance the NPP has had yeah. in the northern region. Mm -hmm. And it's absolutely surprising because you'd have thought that at least, if not for anything at all, they would have stayed within the 40 percentile mark. mark yeah. But this one, they even dropped way less than 30, uh, 20 uh, they are 29.5%, and that's significant to note. Yeah. What would this mean going into, into 2024? Yeah. It would also, it's also instructive to note that if you look at the current numbers that have registered to vote, mm -hmm. the Northern region is pulling some significant yes. uh, numbers. The, 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 the campaign messages in that particular region from the NDC is that this is supposed to be one of our a, safe havens, our strongholds, yeah. our strongholds. So there was a mistake in 2016. We quickly recovered in 2020. Let us entrench that recovery exactly. going into 2024. Yes. So that is the stake for JDM um, to really entrench his position or entrench the NDC's position as, okay, the northern hold is ours, right? So mm. not, not just even for the northern region, but all the five uh, uh, regions, regions in somewhere. the northern part of Ghana. And... There has, and it's a good message for the NDC to be saying now because they have consistently seen some small decline. 
and in some areas, huge decline mm. uh, in terms of their support when, when you compare it to the MPP uh, candidature and the, and, and the elections, uh, especially from this period of 2012 to 2020. 2020 yeah. So they have every right to be not worried, yeah. but to be a bit cautious of losing what has been seen historically as their stronghold, mm -hmm. especially when you look at these numbers here for the northern region, this increase here for the northern region, also the previous one that we showed, where you see this increase again in the parliamentary results, right. every single person in the MPP will be wondering, okay, what is happening to our stronghold? In the NDC, we be wondering, what is happening to our stronghold mm. and how can we correct right. that moving forward? Right. So I think when you look at, again, the next region, which is the Savannah region, mm. again, on the presidential side, it's a clean sweep for the NDC. They've mm. won it seven out of... Um, uh, seven, seven out of seven, seven times, yes. yes. And the MPP has not won the presidential at that level. Yeah. But when you go a bit deeper into it and you look at what has been happening in the Savannah region. So when you look at the parliamentary results, NDC has practically owned it. And of course, there was a bit of an increase for the MPP where they gained one seat, increased yeah. it to two, but then it came down to zero, came yes. down to zero. And again, in 2016, they performed a little bit better, mm. gaining one seat in the Savannah region. And in 2020, that mm, miracle sorry. that happened for them in the northern is yeah. also showing again where they increased the numbers down to three. The problem here is you can see a sharp decline okay. happening for the NDC in that same Savannah region. Mm. And if that trend continues, they might be matching yeah. the um, MPP or even the MPP might surpass them yes. if they also continue the trend of going up yeah. come 2024. Yeah. So that uh, is what you are seeing again, also specifically for mm. the Savannah, the Savannah region. region. Yeah, and 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 again as to whether again these numbers and this is Savannah region where John Mahama exactly. hails from. Yeah. So you would have thought that because he has been in power before and is also now contesting, the numbers of the NDC would improve. Proof. But these are the parliamentary the results. Uh, results. Exactly. So let's yeah. look at uh, how the. And, that's, and this is what I wanted to mention on the Savannah side. So the presidential results on the Savannah side have pretty much been stable okay. when you look at it, right? So even though the Baumia effect, that we've, that, as we've been calling it, has happened for the NPP on a grand level in the northern parts, mm. when you look at Savannah specifically on the presidential level, it really doesn't show much. Mm -hmm. It's much of... Uh, a decline from what they gained in 2020, mm. uh, 2008. 2008. Of course, there was some better performance in uh, 2020, um, but you can clearly see that the Savannah yeah. region has stayed quite loyal and true to the, the NDC. NDC. Yeah. And of course, the NDC will be banking their hopes, will be banking everything on it staying loyal and true to the NDC mm. come the 2024 presidential elections. All right, also. Uh, that's a very important point to note. And again, these uh, numbers you are seeing for 2008, 56.7 for the NDC, 39.5 for the NPP. This is the particular year in which um, Dr. Baumia was named as a running mate for Nana Kufado. Yeah. Maybe he had some effect. We cannot yeah, tell we for cannot now tell. because it's in the past. However, you would have thought that at least uh, there will be some stability mm -hmm. or increase. It actually has increased from 2016 to 2020. 2016, there was a national... Uh, uh, there was some sort of an appeal of the NPP candidate. Of there course. was a sweep yes. across the entire country. But even in 2016, the NPP's performance actually dropped, dropped a little to 33.4. Yes. And 2020, it went up. We are unable to tell what 2024 would look like. Mm -hmm. But subsequently, we would look at the specific numbers in terms of the regions and even constituencies that have stayed loyal exactly. to some parties yeah. and its effect on the national, on the regional numbers when they come out. So this is the Savannah region. And like we indicated, we're also looking at the total number of people who have registered exactly. to vote in 2024. Of the entire tabulation, the greater Accra is number one, the Ashanti region is number two. If you follow it in that order, the 15th region with the highest voter population mm -hmm. increase mm -hmm is the Savannah region. Yeah. And it is worthy of note because if you look at these numbers, maybe we, uh, it, subsequently we should be able to bring the nominal numbers. Yes, for then you can tell so, whether or not... Exactly, yes, what the percentages actually mean in terms of the uh, exactly. nominal figures. And, and out of the 16 regions, this is the 15th 
highest. Yeah. 15 thousand is actually quite low. The next is the Upper East region. All right. So um, those who have registered to vote in 2024, 342,431. Okay. The Northeast region, we touched on briefly, but this is how they are parliamentary results have looked like yes. since 96. 96, it was a total sweep. Yes. Uh, no MPP vote at all. At all. But what you again see with the Northeast region, which is one of the uh, key regions for the NPP on the parliamentary side, is that they have consistently performed quite better than the NDC when it comes to the 2012, 2016 and 2020 elections. Okay. And uh, again here, the stakes for both parties are simple. The NPP would want to establish itself at least in terms of the parliamentary results yes. because the inroads they are making on the parliamentary side is significantly decreasing the NDC stronghold mm. even if they are not mm. winning the presidential uh, specifically so they'll want to at least maintain their parliamentary leadership in the northeast region and um, also maybe increase it and make it better in the other regions mm. um, and this shows that the stake for the NDC is to go back to declaring that because from owning or from having about four seats in 2008 and coming all the way down to two in that region yeah. seems uh, a bit, yeah. it's, 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 it's worrying. Yeah. It's a worrying trend that yeah. you can clearly see. There was a bit of a, a better performance in 2016, but clearly it did down again yeah. in 2020. Yeah, it's surprising. You see, if you go through like uh, all the data we've analyzed in a few minutes, you could tell that in 2016, the NPP had a national swell. Yeah. But here in 2016, the NPP just, in fact, the NPP um, didn't perform as much. Yes, they lost one they lost seat, yeah, one seat. On, the on the parliamentary side. Yes, but if you still stay on that trend, in 2020, the, a number of the regions that predominantly vote for NDC, it was as if they realized, oh, we made a mistake in 2016. So the NPP numbers started dropping, dropping again, again. Yeah. in the 2020 elections. NDC did better, but here in the Northeast region, it looks as though the NDC still couldn't push uh, to get, points above yeah. their weight and actually dropped and lost one more seat. Yes. So they have so two. they dropped one seat that was gained back uh, the by the NPP. All right, so and that's the Northeast region, and this is their presidential result since 96. Exactly. So this Northeast region is one of the two regions, I would say, uh, that have been swinging a little bit right so where the uh, the ndc has still is, is still in the lead winning five of the presidential elections but of course uh, when you look at it uh, at the full regional level the npp has also won the elections there twice mm. uh, since 1996 and one of them i'm sure is 2016 so let's let's actually take a close look at it in terms of when the npp yeah. won um so these numbers are the 20 uh, i beg upon the northeast region from 92 or 96 straight through it was in 2016 2016 that yes. the npp won yes uh, by a slight percentage that's very very razor thin slim right 49.4 percent for the npp 48.5 percent for, for the, the NDC. ndc and again like i indicated after the 2016 elections mm. it was as if no people need thought that there was a mistake in 2016 let's reset that mistake in our strongholds mm -hmm. then the ndc went up again mm -hmm. but the margin wasn't as big as all expect. the other times they've won, yes. bar 2004. Yeah. 2004, when they actually performed their worst. Um, I think that since then, so 2004, they were just 43. 2016, they came down to 48. They started uh, uh, rising again in 2024. We don't know whether this will crisscross or the trajectory will continue. Yeah. So what you're clearly seeing from data is, Eventually, we might have to start qual uh, uh, qualifying the Northeast region as one of the swing regions, right? Because if you look at the, the 1996 the result, the gap here, and how within just like six cycles, it has come to almost an even split, mm. you can clearly see that, okay, something significant is happening in that region, something significant is happening in all the constituencies that make up that region. Mm. A good point to note, because that region did not exist in this particular elections. Okay. Right? As a northeast, it is a not, northeast region. Yeah. It so was part of the northern region. It was part of the region. northern region. So we are looking at also those constituencies that were cut out or carved out to become the northeast region. Something significant is happening there mm. that is about to make it, mm. if you should continue this trend, a swing region that it will be 
harder for anyone outside to predict yeah. what the voting pattern would look like, both on the presidential and also on the parliamentary side, side of yeah. the... And it stands to reason that we also need to look at the NPP's growth mm -hmm. in the region as well. Yeah. I mean, from the wide gap of 75 and 12, they have seen, you know, um, uh, and what was the expression? They've seen like a, a steady climb, you know, and 32, 35, 44, 48... And even their worst performance was just about uh, one, percentage one percentage point, point you know, yeah. loss to 47. So it means that NPP has actually done some good work in the Northeast region or is doing something right in, in the, the Northeast, Northeast region, region that if NDC wants to retain its dominance, they really need to start looking uh, paying particular attention to. Yes. And this is the total number of registered voters for the upcoming election, elections, yeah. uh, which makes it, again, the, at the bottom of the table, the exactly. 16th highest. Yeah. Um, and it is a clear figure that the end, both parties have to be worried about, even though it's at the bottom of the table. It's mm. almost an even split for them. Yes. So every single one of them will be looking at how can we increase the dominance because this halved yeah. would give us less if we're able to do this 70% or maybe 60% yeah. or maybe even just 55% percent instead of being like above. a 49% or 48% mm. in that sense. All right, so that's the Northeast region we've put in perspective for you. The Upper East now, which is yes. at the very top, uh, is a border region. The NDC has predominantly had it safe yep. since 96. Uh, yes. Even 92, if you add it. That, so we are going into our ninth election yep. cycle, but of the last... Eight, yeah. the NDC has, has won and won comfortably. Yep. Now let's try and break it down into specifics for you. Yes, so for the Upper East, and of course, you would also see a similar trend in the Upper West region. It's consistently stayed true to the, um, it's to, uh, to the NDC. I think one thing that um, you would see if, we, if you visit the, our election portal, 3news.com slash elections, and you use our analysis tab, you can even look into each of the constituencies to see the voting pattern. Right. And you would clearly see that there were some big shocks in there where for the first time I have actually ever seen uh, a presidential candidate from the NPP did not show up in top two. Yeah. An independent <laughs> candidate outperformed okay. in one of the constituencies. So okay. for the Upper East, is practically been steady. There have been some drops uh, in this uh, block over here. But of course, the NDC has been performing quite well yeah. um, in 2012, 2016. And of course, in 2014, where they shot up. 2020. Uh, sorry, 2020, where they shot up. And of the NPP only ended Just up with one yeah. seat in yeah. parliament. Yeah. Yeah, that's quite significant to know that. And again, so the NDC has been stable. In 2016, when even there was a national swell for the NPP, the NDC managed to retain it's the number of seats yep. they had in the region and then increased it in the 2020 election. So that's by way of parliamentary, and now we are Upper West yes. region. So similar situation in the Upper West region. It's been a clear shot for the NDC on the presidential side. They won it seven times. Mm. Um, again, when you look at the parliamentary uh, results, it's been also very much strong for the NDC. NDC. Uh, of course, there's been some decline in performance. Again, when we look at that 2016 uh, swell, as mm. you've been calling it, there was a sharp decline. Um, but 2020, there was an other uptake for mm. the NDC. Mm. Again, that performance for the MPP, uh, sorry, this you say MPP, that performance for the MPP in the 2016 uh, elections, especially on the parliamentary side, right. was very, very strong yeah. because they moved from having zero seats to clinching five, Absolutely. which is uh, which is like a miracle a in terms yeah. of uh, election uh, results. Yeah. It is a huge jump yeah. to move from having no seats again to coming to five. five at a goal. Um, of course, a very huge jump. But again, we see that in the 2020 election, they yeah. lost two yeah, of that. People just realize that, oh, wait, what did we do? <laughs> they so lost two of back. that. And of course, the NDC gained uh, yeah. two to now increase their hold to yeah. eight, which it, is still it, not up to 10. But yes. A bit, it's, better than, yeah. it's better than the six they had in 2016. Yes. And again, eventually as the show goes on or in subsequent uh, uh, shows, we would even go to some specific constituencies and then it tells a better story of how things have changed over the years. And this is how the, Presidential the graph for the upper has West looked has like been, over time. It's pretty much been for the NDC. Uh, no major surprises happening there. The key things to point out, again, the 2016 
uh, swell that mm. happened. Uh, of course, the, N the NDC lost a little bit. The NPP also gained a little bit. Um, but things sort of normalized to trend, if I should call it exactly. that way, when it came to the 2020 actually, uh, elections. Coincidentally, things over normalized yeah. because the highest the NPP, the NDC had gained in the upper west region was 65.2. Then in 2020, short to 67. 67.4. So they actually made uh, a marginal increase. Yeah. And the NDC, the MPP also um, lost out quite significantly, dropping yes. to their to, second lowest. Yes, their second lowest. lowest. Or so actually, third, no, third actually. lowest when you count in the 2020 election. Yes, the, 2000, the, 2000 election. the 2000 elections. All right, so we've just been trying to put in perspective what the voting trends have been mm -hmm. in the three. Well, five, but then we are focusing on the three key ones. So these are the uh, total number of those persons who have registered to vote. It is the 12th highest in terms of the rankings, yep. and their number is hovering around 518,365 yep. people who will be turning out to vote. If you look at the nominal numbers and the voter turnout, mm -hmm. voter turnout is also significant to look at. If even say 60% of these people turn out to vote, it could change the dynamics completely. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so although it's a very safe seat for the NDC, over time we've realized that whenever there is a likelihood of a change in government, voter turnout increases. Yeah. You know, so this is a particular region to also keep a, a very close eye on. And uh, we'll see how things play out. That's, that's a good point to note in terms of voter turnout because mm. with Greater Accra on top of that table, in fact, with the top three regions uh, in terms of total registered voters, you would see that there is a lower percentage of voter turnout. Turnout, yes, right? Yes. So again, even though these regions will be uh, at the bottom, there's a higher turnout yes. when it comes to how people galvanize the grassroots yeah. to go and vote for them. Mm -hmm. So they, it's key to focus on the numbers, but also focus on what the turnout has historically mm -hmm. been and what mm -hmm. it is projected to be for the 2024 uh, uh, elections. Right. right. So um, one other thing uh, we, we probably in coming days will talk about will be the way... So, you know, Greater Accra in terms of land size is small. These areas are quite huge yes. and sparsely... Um, the, the settlement is quite sparse and scattered. Yeah. The challenge sometimes is that they having to travel to places to vote is a challenge. Some people, will not, they either are going on horses or donkeys, or have to <laughs> trek. Yeah. You know, so it's a major challenge that yeah. you know over time the electoral commission also needs to pay particular attention mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. You know, so you make voting a lot more easier, easier for, for people. people. Yeah. You know, there was a concern about registration during the registration, registration people, period. Yes. People he wanted not, everybody uh, yes. to go to their district office. Yeah. Whereas a, there could be a police station right in the neighborhood, yeah. they could go to and vote. Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for staying with us. And uh, what we've been doing today is just trying to help you also understand and stay in the conversation of how the northern, northeast, and savannah regions have voted. Also, we added the upper east and upper west. They predominantly seem to have voted for the NDC. Mm -hmm. However, the NPP has made significant inroads like uh, Senna indicated. And depending on the messaging and the activation, the political campaign activities in those areas, the dynamics could change significantly yeah. going into 2024. Eventually, as the show goes on or in coming days, we'll try and go onto the ground and try and tease out some of the key issues of concern to the constituents. Senna, Thank you for passing through. Thank you we'll very much. We'll be doing much. a lot more. We'll keep an eye on him. We'll be bringing him <laughs> more.